Ah, there's something about the spring and the beginning of baseball season. While the rest of the country is frozen over, Arizona and Florida play host to all the Major League Baseball teams in their spring training facilities. Um, one of the major benefits of visiting Arizona spring training is that a lot of the parks um, in what's called the Cactus League here are situated in the Phoenix metro area, so they're really close. The two furthest parks are really about no longer than an hour and a half drive from one point to the next. Um, and each offer, you know, tons of different things, you know, with the multiple, and there's multiple training facilities in between them, so you could basically hit all of them. So today we're going to go and we're going to visit three of the top rated and most visited spring training facilities in Arizona. So if you're ready for some baseball, um, this should be a fun one for you. So stay tuned and let's hit this. <laughs> So if this is your first time to our channel and you want to know everything there is to know about Arizona, the Phoenix metro area, or really anything about real estate in Arizona, living in Arizona in general, please like this video, subscribe, and of course ring that bell to stay up to date. My name is Len, you may know my partner Jason, and we get calls on the daily from subscribers just like you looking to make a move to sunny Arizona. Um, we absolutely love hearing from you and can't wait to answer any of the questions that you have because we absolutely love living here and we love hearing from you. So. You know, whether you're looking to make a move in six days or maybe even if it's six months, don't hesitate, reach out. Anyways, uh, baseball. Who doesn't love baseball and baseball season? There's something about warmer weather and the thawing out of the winter that just kind of makes you feel good. So here's a fun little fact. Um, the first registered account of spring training events actually back back date all the way to 1869 with the New York Mutuals decided to host in New, New Orleans. The Cactus League here in Arizona started in 1947 with Cleveland Indians and the New York Giants in Phoenix. The Chicago Cubs moved from Catalina Island to Mesa in 1951. The next team to head out was the Orioles in 1954. By 1999 there was a total of eight teams here in Arizona. Now fast forward to today, 2023, and you will find 15 teams in 10 stadiums trickled across the Phoenix area. There are a few teams that share stadiums and obviously a few that don't. With all that being said, you'll find that not all teams and bar ballparks have the exact same draw as some of the other ones. So without further ado, let's hit those top three ranked parks here in the Phoenix area for spring training baseball. All right, let's go for a drive and let's go take, check out some ballparks. This is gonna be fun. All right, so we took a little drive over to our number three spot here, and we're at Scottsdale Stadium in basically what we call Old Town Scottsdale. Uh, you can see the stadium behind me. It's kind of hard to see from where I'm at. I'm on the, the parking garage, but um, there's really no way to get a good side of the field from anywhere but here. This is probably the best spot to see it, so that's where we're going to check out from here. I could actually see some of the players here already. Um, so we're already we're still in February, and players are going to be starting here pretty soon. I see people walking around in here. They're walking the field. Um, I'll see if I can get the camera swinging around so you can see some of that. But like I said, number three on our most popular list here is Scottsdale Stadium um, in Scottsdale, Arizona. Like I said, Old Town Scottsdale. Um, the original stadium was actually built here in 1956 and has been home to the Orioles, the Red Sox, Cubs, A's, and now this is host to the San Francisco Giants. So you can kind of see the outfield here behind me. Uh, the current facility here began construction in 1991 and saw its first games in spring of 1992. Now that actually seems like a pretty good turnaround uh, for a construction project, um, you know, especially based on how they do things today. Everything seems to take twice as long. Um, 
In 2006, this stadium underwent a $23 million renovation uh, with a goal of playing here until 2025. So it's 2023 um, when they originally did that renovation, they were just anticipating an additional two years at this location, but they did put in a, an optional year, 10 year extension to give them the option to play until 2035. Um, for a stadium that was built in 1991, it's actually pretty impressive that this has a capacity of 12,000 seats. So it seats quite a bit of people. I mean, you can see the, I don't know if you can see that back there, the arena, but you can see the grandstand pretty nice back there. And it's a nice looking facility. Um, if you look, I'm gonna see if I can get you up there a little bit higher, but you can see the facility here, pretty nice. And like I said, you can see pl some people that back there. Um, I'm guessing, that they're probably just you know crew people things like that just getting everything ready for spring training which is starting here really really soon so um, come check it out this is number three on our list uh, San home of the San Francisco Giants and, and it's a great location so one of the nice things about this location is if you come to a game Old Town Scottsdale is right here and so if you look you can see the peak of Camelback Mountain over there um, you've got restaurants you've got hotels everything is right here you've got the whole mall shopping area over there. So it's a great location. Um, you've got the Performing Arts Center right over here. Um, plenty to do. So you go to a game, have some fun, go out to dinner or go out to dinner before, come to the game in case you don't want to just grab a hot dog. But you know, definitely not one of those kind of in and out like, well, once I'm done, I'm done, I gotta go type thing. So this is, like I said, number three. Let's head on over to number two. All right, next on our list, so this is the number two most popular, most visited um, baseball spring training facilities in the Phoenix area, which is where all of the spring training facilities are. Um, actually, one little point is there was a point where, in time where some of the spring training facilities were down in Tucson, they had them in different parts, they weren't all in the Phoenix metro area, but as of now, they all are, which makes anybody coming out here to visit in the spring makes it so much better so number two we come in at salt river fields behind me as i'm going to kind of walk backwards this is kind of a little weird but this is the home to the colorado rockies and the local arizona diamondbacks which you know it's kind of <laughs> interesting they've got their stadium here um so they maybe don't necessarily need a spring training facility because they could train at home but obviously that is being used for other stuff other parts of the year you know they have monster truck rallies there concerts things of that such so this gives them a huge facility and this place is really really nice i mean so if you look you can see and i'll, I'll try to walk you on a little bit i see some people there but you know right behind me you've got a facility here so you've got a ball you got a field here you've got another field here you've got another field there where's where they play the games and then you've got another field here so there's just a ton of fields here for them to practice now remember you've got the colorado rockies and the diamondbacks here so that's part of the reason why they're going to need all these different fields um, just for you know practice and training and things of that such when you're having two teams share the facility um, this park was built and i've got some notes here because i don't like to get things wrong so this park was built, actually in round, I'll kind of big, take that back a step. So back in 2009, when the Chicago White Sox decided to leave Tucson, the Diamondbacks and the Rockies were kind of like, huh, maybe we should do that too. It seems like everybody's going into the Phoenix area. And so in 2011, um, the seasons for 2011 saw the opening of this park, um, and it's a state-of-the-art ballpark, and it seats about 11,000 people, so it's a good-sized ballpark. Um, it's not the biggest, but it's the second newest of the ballparks here in Phoenix. So our number one 
most visited, most popular park is going to be the, um, the newest of the facilities here in the Phoenix area. But this one here is the second newest. But it, it's, a, it's a beautiful facility. I mean, they got this little creek running through here. I don't know if you can see that. But it's just a really nice place. Once again, location-wise, it's great. It's right off the highway. So it only took us like 10 minutes to get here from the stadium that we were just at Scottsdale Stadium over to here. So we're still in Scottsdale, but there's restaurants, there's things like that. Um, you can kind of see, once again, Camelback Mountain way behind me, um, right over here. So there's Camelback Mountain. So there's kind of a reference point for you as far as where we were as to where we are now. But this is kind of where we're at. So like I said, um, what people may not understand or know about this facility in particular is that this is built on, and I want to get this right, so I'm going to look again. This is built on the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community land. So this is not, even though we call it Scottsdale, it's technically um, reservation land. And so it's leased out to um, the ballparks for them to use this facility. And obviously when there's no spring training in session, there's just massive parking lots over there. And you'll have like the balloon festival here. You've got, um, you know, different food festivals, cultural events. So they really do utilize this space pretty well and they take really good care of the space and it gets used all year round, not just for um, the training, you know, during spring training time. So I definitely recommend checking out this one. Um, it's a great place to come and watch a ball game, depending on who your team is. I mean, like I said before, 15 of the teams are here. So, you know, they're probably gonna be playing at this stadium at some point in time. Um, but you know, it's a great, great park, and it's in a great location, and there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to get in and get out. You know, even if you had to head over to the west side and watch a game over there, because it's off the highway, you could get from one to the next really, really quick. And then if you really want to have some fun with your kids, come in, stay at the Great Wolf Lodge. Um, that place is super popular. Obviously, you could, you know, they've got the water slides and things like that. So location-wise, you've got a great spot right here. But it's a great facility. Um, this is number two on our list. So one more to go to hit our number one, and we're gonna hit the car again, hit the road, and let's go check out the number one most popular uh, spring training facility in the state of Arizona. On our way. All right, and we have made it to our number one most popular spot here in the Phoenix metro area. And you can see over my shoulder, it's the home of the Chicago Cubs. This is the um, spring training home of the Chicago Cubs. Happens to be my favorite team. I'm a Chicago native, um, grew up loving the Cubs. Apparently there's a couple pictures of me where the White Sox hat on, but I've decided to shred those. I was a wayward youth. I was being read, led in the wrong direction, but I've come to the right side. And so basically what we're looking at here is this is called Sloan Park. Uh, the Cubs didn't originally start here in Sloan Park. Their original um, training facility was actually in Catalina Island in California, which is kind of an odd little story. It's one of those funny things where I guess the Wrigley family had bought some land on Catalina Island and so they decided to throw their ballpark up. And this is obviously way back in like the early 1900s um, and then they moved to Mesa moved out and back to California then back to Mesa and so a quick little history and I like I said write write stuff down I like to keep things back straight so this parking park here opened up as Cubs Park um, in its original year in 2014 after being in the current 
which is still there, the Hohokam Stadium. So they were there since 1997. They were the original Hoho. They were in the original Hohokam Stadium from 1979 until 1996. The Athletics were host to that stadium from 1977 until 1978. Ironically, um, they're hosts again. So now the A's are back at the Hohokam Stadium. But that being said, um, you know, one of the things that I read on this one, they say tradition melds. This is the verbiage, right? So tradition melds with state-of-the-art facilities for the Chicago Cubs as this team starts its, you know, eighth season here. So it's Sloan Park. It's a great stadium. So um, they got a lot of work going on, a lot of workers. Uh, I don't want to intrude too much on what they're doing, but you can see behind me, it looks like they're working on the Jumbotron as we speak, but it's a great place. This is a 15,000 seat capacity stadium. So you can fill a lot of people in there. I've been in the seats here. I've been in the, the lawn. We like to bring the kids here to do the lawn seats just because it's a lot of fun and they can chase the balls around and they can play with the other kids. And you know, with kids, <laughs> they might get bored having to sit in their seat. Um, it's family friendly, great facilities, great concessions great location so once again we're right off the highway I mean it took us I think 11 minutes to get from the um, the uh, Diamondback Stadium down to here so it was just a straight shot down the highway you know it's the great thing is like all the top three of the stadiums that hit the top three were fortunately for me really close to each other one two three um, but you know here we are at number the number one most popular stadium um, Chicago Cubs have an interesting history when it comes to um, their fan base, right? So I talk to a lot of people and I see them wearing Cubs hats and I'm always like, oh, were you from, you know, originally from Chicago? And I hear no, 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 no all the time. And one of the main reasons why I think that Chicago Cubs had such a big audience for all these years was the fact that they were on WGN, right? And so WGN ran on cable for many years. Well, it still does probably. I don't have cable anymore, but um, so you'd have people from all over the country who the only baseball games they could watch was Cubs games. So, you know, that's part of the reason why the Cubs had such a big following. So I don't know who decided that, made that happen, but that was a genius move as far as, you know, building a fan base. Um, but yeah, great stadium. I love it here. Um, as a Cubs fan, you know, this is one of my favorite places to come. I've seen almost all the different, you know, I've seen them play almost all the different teams here. Uh, but check this one out. I hope you enjoyed the top three um, that we showed you. Uh, but this is definitely one that I would recommend. Well, thanks for taking some time with us today, um, taking a look at these top three spring training ballparks here in Arizona. While I'm here at my favorite park, I'll quickly go over numbers four and number five. So coming in at number four is Camelback Ranch, which is in Glendale, so that's on the west side. Um, I stopped at three mainly because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with the fact that they're home to the Dodgers, but they're also home to the Chicago White Sox. I mean, Dodgers are okay, but the White Sox, I'm ah, just kidding. Um, anyways, that stadium holds 13,000 people, which is a pretty good amount of people as well. And so at number five, ranked here in Arizona, is home to the Milwaukee Brewers. And Brewers games are always fun. Um, played at the Cubs stadiums back in the day. You know, we would drive up to Milwaukee, and you know, it was only about an hour over there, and we'd see a bunch of people coming down there. But their park is the American Family Field in Phoenix, and that's got a capacity of 98.85. It's probably the smallest stadium out of the top five. It is actually. I haven't actually personally made it to that park, but you know what? Maybe if the Brewers are playing a Cubs game, you know, I might drive up there and check it out. So if you want me to rank the rest of them, um, feel free to reach out in the comments, send me a message. I'll be happy to rank the rest of them. So like I said, there's 10 different stadiums here, so there's five more to go. But anyways, have a great day and go Cubbies.